All right, so today I'm going to be doing a thermostat and a drive belt on this 2000, I don't know, 8 or 9 Mercedes C350 W204. It's the same process on the 3 liter and the 3.5. It's also the same process for a lot of the V8s, 450 and 550. Um, I'm going to start off by taking off this air pump, which looks like it's just a couple of Torx T30s, one top, one bottom. Then we're going to be going for the main belt tensioner right there, which looks like another Torx T30. Take the old belt off. Then I'm going to be going for this bolt right here, which holds an idler on. The main reason we're taking that off is because it's in the way of one of the two access holes for our thermostat housing. Okay, so there are four Torx T30s that hold the secondary air pump on. One on the top right back here, and then there's actually a small metal bracket that's attached to the pump on the bottom. And you can see two holes right there. And one right back in there. Here are the four bolts in order from right to left, in case you lose track. And now you can get this just out of the way enough where you can see both the lower and the upper e torques that hold the thermostat into the front of the engine. Now, right here, this is not a typical radiator hose. This is a late model German quick disconnect. So grab a pick or some other sort of implement and gently. <clears throat> Sorry, it's below zero where I am Fahrenheit, so <clears throat> work that clip off, or at least out of the way enough where you can release the hose, and then carefully separate it. Um, if you've just been running the car, uh, take a note out of my book, <laughs> undo the coolant cap first to let off the pressure, otherwise you'll make a little bit more of a mess here. But uh, once the hose has been separated, uh, you can go ahead and take the thermostat off the front of the engine and then hopefully you have a new one, a new gasket, and then there's two bolts that Mercedes recommends replacing when you do the thermostat. Once the thermostat is out of the front timing cover, there is one more little sensor you have to take off here. And on this plug, that little gray piece, you have to slide out and then you push down on this little black tab as you pull the plug away from the sensor. So there you have it. Don't forget to re-plug in that electrical connector on the bottom. But once you've got this far, align your hose and snap in. Once you hear the click, it's in. Um, generally at this point, before you put the belt back on, uh, I'm actually going to replace it because this car has done 76,000 miles. Even though the original one looks okay, you never know for sure. I do recommend topping up the coolant at this point, just to check everything for leaks. Um, hopefully you're in a warmer climate than I am. <laughs> Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, once you've confirmed all that, we're going to go ahead and put the secondary air pump back. Don't forget to plug in the electrical connector. two hoses, one right there, one right there, and then we've got the four screws on that bracket as well. Um, I'm going to do that next, then I'm going to put the uh, idler back on, route the new belt, and then uh, retension down here on this tensioner. Sorry, it's impossible really to see here. If I move the belt right down there where I'm jiggling my finger, there's a 17 millimeter lug. That's a way better area for you to get some torque on it and uh, loosen up that tensioner to slide the new belt on. So there you have the belt routing. This is one of the longest belts I've ever encountered. Here's your new thermostat. Where is it? There's the tensioner lug. So yeah, once you're to this point, double check everything, fill it with coolant, and then uh, fire her up and check for heat. Well, all done. Time to fire it up.
now just wait for heat and check it for leaks.